Hi, this is Serge Spiro with the Dr. Vax channel. And today we're going to get creative. The inspiration for the video today about 3D printing photographs comes from the Dr. Vax forum. On the Dr. Vax forum, viewers of the Dr. Vax videos on YouTube have a place where they can interact with each other, they can post images, ask questions, and it's a safe community where it encourages makers using a range of technologies to learn from each other. I want to give a shout out specifically to Rune4660, to Ender5R, and to Vasily, who on that forum have asked a series of questions about lithophanes and discussed the best ways to produce them. In fact, Vasily pointed me in the direction of the software that I'm going to demonstrate today, which is excellent free software. I believe it comes out of the Netherlands. So first, let's start with a very quick introduction to a lithophane. This may look like just a block of 3D printed plastic. In fact, this was printed very quickly. It was printed in about an hour on my Monoprice Ultimate 2 using white PLA from Hatchbox. It was printed fast at 70 millimeters per second with a 0.2 millimeter layer height. Now I'm gonna move this closer to the camera and we'll let the camera focus there. And you might be able to see a little bit of an image, but not much. If I turn it on an angle, you can see that. Now watch what happens when I take and I shine a light behind that image. Suddenly, the image becomes visible. These magical images called lithophanes were designed, were created, were invented in the early 1800s. And stay tuned, and I'm going to teach you how to create lithophanes on pretty much any 3D printer. And if you print them slower at a lower layer height, they will come out absolutely beautiful. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. So let's start with a bit of background. To put this all in perspective, we have to remember that photography was invented in about the 1820s, 1830s. So before that, if you wanted an image of someone, you had to hire an artist. If you wanted many copies of that image, you could potentially use silk screening or other types of um, approaches to reproduce that print. There were printing presses, but these created uh, prints that weren't of the highest quality, and they were prints that were designed to be lit from the front. So the idea of a slide or a transparent print was relatively new. Lithophanes are a creative process where originally the artist would carve the lithophane image into wax. It took a long time. They would then make a mold out of the wax in plaster of Paris or other materials. Then they would pour porcelain, translucent porcelain, into that mold. Suddenly, you had a beautiful piece. It could be a lampshade, it could be an image, and when you lit it with a, originally, a candle from behind, it was something no one had ever seen before. So lithophanes are really quite beautiful. And you can see here, I'll show you an image on the screen of one that's properly lit here. And you'll see that it's sort of a beautiful, rich image. So let's show you what you need to produce a lithophane. The first thing you need is a photograph. I recommend you start with a photograph or an image that has a very simple background. It could be a portrait where the background is white or a wall, very simple background. It could be 
an image of an object. Once again, you want the object to have some detail, but a simple background. So if you have a photograph and it doesn't have a simple background, or even if it does, how do you make the background perfectly clear, perfectly uniform? Because the best lithophanes have a background that is perfectly clear. Let me show you. You need an image editing program. Now you could use Photoshop, expensive. You could use Affinity Photo, which is a program I really like. It's still about 50, 60 bucks. You could use a free program called GIMP, but it's really sort of tricky to use. I've used it in other videos. I found an online image editor that's quite wonderful. And if you're willing to put up with some ads that actually will pop up on the screen and stop you for five, six seconds, it's completely free. Let me show it to you. Pixlr is an image editor um, that you use from a web browser. And yet it is remarkably good. If you choose to license it, you pay a monthly fee. So what would, for the basic license, it's basically $5 a month, $60 a year. But you can always use it for free. I'm going to use the free version today, and you'll see some ads pop up. And uh, I'm not supporting these products or these ads in any ways other than looking at them. And these ads stay on the screen for about six seconds or so. I'm gonna speed it up a little bit in the video. So let's go back to the image editor. And I'm going to use the Pixlr X editor, which is the simpler version. The E version has some more advanced features. I'm going to click on open image and we'll open up an image here. I'll say I want the full HD quality image, click apply. Now you'll see a picture of me holding a caliper, but now I do have a green screen in my studio, so I'm on a solid background. You pr might be able to get away with using this as in, as is in a lithophane, but maybe not. You really ideally want a transparent background, the background to completely disappear. So how do I do that? Well, there's a wonderful tool here, and this tool is called Cutout. If I click on this, I get an option, and I can use these various options here to paint the background area I want to cut out. I'm going to click on this AI Cutout feature and let it do the first version on its own. Now you'll see here it's thinking, and then I get an ad to watch. If I hit cancel, it will not finish the process. So I have to watch the whole ad. The ad runs for about six seconds. Then I get a continue button. I'll click on that and you'll see it's cut out my image. Now there's a little bit of green around me. And if I was using this in a video or something else, this wouldn't really be good enough. So I'd have to zoom in and fine tune this by using the tools over here. But for our purposes, this is just fine. Now, what else do you want to do to an image you're going to create as a lithophane? Well, you want to adjust the contrast. You want the contrast to be relatively high. We'll make it a bit higher here because that will make the lithophane work better because the lithophane, depending on the thickness you make it, has only so many gradations it can create by making it thinner or thicker. I'm going to say apply. I could, if I chose here, I could crop this image. I could resize this image. It's a quite useful tool, but I'm going to just say save. I'm going to save this as a PNG. And the reason I'm selecting PNG instead of JPEG is PNG will leave the background transparent. So let's go ahead and download this. And that's going to save it to my download directory. I'm going to see another ad here, um, but this was free, so I don't really have a lot to complain about. It's downloaded. And now if I show it in Finder and I click on that image, you'll see the background is completely transparent.
Okay, now once I have a properly sized image and I have to get the dimensions, the proportions of the width to the height correct for what I want my final lithophane to look like. And depending on the tool I use, I might be putting this in a traditional frame. I might be building some type of frame where I have a light bulb behind it. And we'll see there's a wonderful tool we're going to look at, which is designed for bulbs you can purchase online to fit right behind them. And so I have to get the proportions correct. Now, the tool I used in a video about a year ago for producing lithophanes was from 3dp.rocks lithophane. And this is a tool where you can create a lithophane and you can create them in different shapes. And so let's show you how this tool works to give you an idea. I'm going to click on image. I'm going to choose a file. I'm going to choose the um, lithophane image. Now here's the image, the JPEG. So let's go to downloads and choose the image where I have the transparent background. And now I can take and rotate this up. Let's see if we can figure out how to do that. There we go. And I can zoom in a little bit. We'll move this over a little bit. And zoom out. And we can see our image here. Now, there are a variety of options. You can make this curved. This was, in fact, an image that was produced curved. I'm going to say refresh. And now we'll see our image curved on the screen. And it looks like this when it's printed. Under settings, there are model settings. And one of the things you can change is the vector, vectors per pixel. The higher that is, the finer the quality of your lithophane. Let me warn you though, if you make that too high, Chrome is going to freeze. So I found it best in this program not to mess with that very much. You can add a border, that seems to be fine, and you can make it thicker. And if you make it thicker, it's going to take a lot longer to print, but you'll have more quality because there's more variation of gradation that you can play with. So I can go back to my model here. I could say refresh. And now we have a bit thicker of an image. Let's see if we can remember how to rotate. There we go. And you'll see the back is smooth. Whoops. There we go. The back is smooth. And you can see from the side the depth of the image. I download it and it will download an STL file. But there's a problem. Let me go and load one of these STL files into a slicer and show you what happens. So I'm going to open up Cura. I'm going to take and load a lithophane produced with the 3DP program into the image. You'll see it actually looks very nice, but it says the model is not manifold. What the heck does that mean? Well, 3D images saved in the STL file are actually made of hundreds and hundreds or thousands and thousands of triangles. And by stacking these triangles, the image is actually saved as a three-dimensional image. Not manifold means all the triangles aren't properly connected together. So how can I fix that? Well, we can download a program called Mesh Mixer. Mesh Mixer is a program that's produced by Autodesk, completely free. And I can load in or import a model into Mesh Mixer. And we can see our model here. When I zoom in, we can see a very nice example of how color or depth is created. Where the model is thicker, it will be darker, and where it's thinner, it will be lighter. Now I can also say, view it as a wireframe, and now when I zoom in, I can actually see all of the shapes 
that are actually making up this model. Let's zoom in even a little bit more. So you'll see how these triangles are connected together. Somewhere these triangles aren't properly connected. So I can go here and click on analysis, click on inspector and say auto repair all. Then I can click on export and resave this as an STL file again and Mesh Mixer will fix those errors. So now if I go back to, let me cancel out of this. If I go back to Cura and I load a version of the same model that was loaded into Mesh Mixer, you'll see it'll load properly. Now, a non-manifold model may actually print correctly. It depends how bad the errors are, but it may have problems, so you're better off repairing it. Let me show you another tool that actually doesn't have the non-manifold issues and produces better lithophanes. Now, if we go to a tool at itslitho.com, now this is the tool that Vasily recommended to me on the Dr. Vax forum. It's remarkable. Now, it is also completely free and it includes some image editing right in the tool. Let me demonstrate this tool to you. So I'm going to click on Get Started. And I'm going to upload an image. So let's upload the same image we uploaded before. And now I'm going to go to Edit. And we'll see the image on our screen. And at this point, I can actually adjust the contrast of the image right here. Now it responds a little bit slowly, but it works quite well. I can rotate or crop the image. I can flip the image. We'll flip that back. I can mirror the image. We'll mirror it back. And so there's quite a bit of image editing capability. In addition, if I go to model, this is where it becomes quite magical. So it shows me what my lithophane should look like. Now using the scroll wheel, I can scroll in or out. The right mouse button will move it around. The left mouse button will rotate the image. So here's an example. I can say there's no frame. I can say there's a border and define the thickness of the border. In this case, because I have a completely white image, you can't really see the border. So we'll put the frame back on. I can control the size of the lithophane. And I can control the shape. So let's make this into an arc. We'll zoom back out and now you'll see it's an arc. I can make it a cylinder. Potentially, I could take and now put a light bulb inside and I have a beautiful lamp. I can make it a sphere. That's really quite weird looking, isn't it? Not sure I like that one. I can control the quality and as you reduce the millimeters per pixel, you'll see the image size go up. I can control the quality of the preview. And then look at something it calls attributes. Let's enable attributes. And now I have the attributes enabled and I'm going to rotate around and you'll see it's, there's a stand to hold it up and a place for a light bulb. I can say instead, I want a place for a light puck. And on the site here, they show you places to buy those. I can put it in night light mode. And there it has a different shape. So there's quite a number of options here for how this is going to work.
One of the most important questions is, what about quality? So let me show you the difference between a lithothane produced with the 3DP rocks site and a lithothane produced with this site. Now it's not quite apples to apples because yeah, I do have to admit this was a curved image, which might be a little harder for it to process. So first let's look at the curved image. We'll see it on the screen here. And I have this light bulb behind it. And then I just put an index card on top um, to cover the top. Uh, you would probably want to 3D print something for the top. So here's the image that is not lit from the back, but lit from the front with my studio lights. And in fact, it's quite difficult sometimes to see these things with these bright studio lights. And here's what it looks like lit from the back. Now you'll see it almost looks a little bit like a negative. The darks are a little bit too dark. Now I could adjust that by taking a look at various parameters in the 3DP rocks site. But this is the default. Let me look now at an image, um, this image here from this site. You'll see it's a little bit bumpy. That's because I'm printing it a little too fast and I have some slicer settings that aren't optimized. I'll list those slicer settings here underneath so you can see what those are. But now let me look at this one lit from behind. And you'll see this is really quite beautiful. This image is beautiful. So for now, I'm gonna to switch to using the itslitho.com site that produces these beautiful lithophanes. Now, what are some other things to think about? Why not print this flat? Well, let's think about a 3D printer for a minute. When you're printing flat, the size that's most critical is the size of the nozzle. That's putting a bead down. If you have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, then it's going to put a 0.4 millimeter bead down. You can't really change that. And therefore, if you want to have very fine detail, you want to print it vertically. Because vertically, instead of 0.4 millimeters, you're limited by the layer height. I can set a 0.1 millimeter layer height. So the bead is still going to be 0.4, but stacked on top of it are going to be 0.1 millimeter layers. That's going to give me a lot more detail. The other thing to think about, I printed this on an Ultimate 2 printer which much like the Ender 5 printers from Creality, are printers where the print bed itself only moves up and down, doesn't move back and forth. Therefore, this is gonna be fairly stable as it moves up and down to print it. If I'm printing this on a print bed that's moving back and forth, that motion is gonna shake this. If this happened to be quite a bit taller, it might start moving. That's why I printed a brim here, to keep it stable, but high enough up and it might start moving. Now I could print a raft under it that would stabilize it even more, but if I rotate it this way, and so the print bed for the y-axis is moving like this, for the most critical details, which are the depth of this image, it's going this way, that's the x-axis. To vary that depth, which has to be very fine movement, I only have to move the x-axis, which is not the print bed itself. It's the carriage with the hot end on it. So there's less inertia there. It's a lighter component. So you may find a different quality. You'll definitely find a different quality if you print flat or vertical. And you may find a different quality if you or orient it along the x-axis or the y-axis. Folks, I hope this uh, YouTube video was meaningful to you. You learned something today. Um, if you want to discuss it, go to forum.drvax.com. There are a bunch of people doing fascinating projects there and sharing them with each other. Give me a thumbs up. Recommend this video to other people, subscribe to the channel, and most importantly, let's keep learning things together.